What's going on, everybody? It's Alfred the Butler. Got my partner in crime with me, Professor X. Yo. Y'all already know what time it is, man. Unspoken culture, man. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Y'all already know we got that California West Coast play, but you know LeBron jump ship. He in the West Coast now, so you know we got Sean from California Love playing, you know. Everybody trying to go to the West Coast now, <laughs> man. The East is horrible in the NBA. Now it's all about the West now. Horrible. Horrible. LeBron to LA, DeMarcus Cousins to the Warriors. Man, don't get me started on that. Sheesh. Anyway, man. A lot of stuff happening. Free agency, man. Sometimes I be feeling bigger than a than a regular season, man, in the NBA. They know how to stretch their season, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I feel like uh, it seems like every sport, especially now the NBA, it seems like the off season and the free agency period is always more exciting than just the regular season. Absolutely. Uh, it just it seems like the regular season, we kind of already know who's going to make the playoffs as far as like the big weeks. You know, like teams like uh, the Suns or whatever, you know, we'll see this year they try to make the playoffs. But we shout, already, out, shout out Devin Booker, though, his contract. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah I saw he got, yeah, he got a lot years, of money. Five man. years. What you think about that? That's a lot of money for him, right? Five years, 158 million. You got million, a full max. Guaranteed. Boy, 24, 25. You would have done that? Really? I need to change my profession, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, I like I like when the NBA uh, free agency period hits. It's just fun for everybody. You see LeBron, of course, like you said, went to LA. We've been hey, saying that for a long time. Hey, right? get right into it, man. What's your thoughts on it? What's your I thoughts? mean, you already know how I feel about it. I feel like LeBron was perfect for LA. Just his legacy. It seems like all the great players in the NBA they end up ending their careers in LA or somehow playing in LA at some point in their career. And LeBron, just his market. You know, just the fact that he reaches so many people in Cleveland. Just imagine him in L.A. Like, he can basically shut down the NBA from, like, a marketing standpoint because all the endorsement deals and now his shoe line is going to be, become that much bigger. So it was just it was just a smart move business-wise, family-wise. Now, basketball-wise, you can, you know, that could be an argument. But, as all, you know, as far as all the other stuff is concerned, he's not worried about winning championships. He's done that already. Uh, his legacy is cemented. They're already comparing him to Jordan. And I don't think he's worried about all that. He's just trying to make the business side of his career at this point. What do you think? Well, yeah, honestly, I think him going to L.A., man, was the worst kept secret uh, for a couple of years. <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, he got, he got a $23 million house in Brentwood. Honestly, man, I, I'm glad that you said business in your little soliloquy in regards to LeBron moving because, I mean, his son's 14. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you see him on all the um, media outlets. He's good at basketball. Cleveland has no prep schools as far as basketball being played, so I feel wow. like... Honestly, man, like I said, it's a business move. You know, he yeah. got that uh, uninter uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. uh, he got that channel for the athletes. He has a Spring Hill Entertainment mm -hmm. studio. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of people don't even know that he's going into Hollywood, man. He tried to be the next Magic Johnson. Exactly. So, he's trying to, you know, branch out into more exactly. things than just basketball. Exactly, so. exactly. And, and if you if you don't know anything about LeBron, man, he really liked taking chances. And mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, L.A. is the city of taking chances, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just looking at researching, like 50% of the population is not even from L.A. Yeah, so wow. it's, it's yeah. just a whole bunch of it's people, man, yeah, exactly, so. going to chase their dreams, man. If you, um, As far as a business venture, he left McDonald's when he had a four-year, $15 million contract. Mm -hmm. And invested yep. into that's a small right. pizza retail called yeah, Blaze right. Pizza. Yeah, and then he, I saw, remember they had the, uh, hey, Blaze, the commercial. Exactly. And around back exactly. Then. So, hey, Blaze Pizza just made $280 million last year. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Because so, LeBron. LeBron's this, got that ability to, this reach, man is always, to reach people that, you know, reach things that we never heard before, you know, Blaze Pizza. And now I've seen it in the town center. Hey, actually, here I, in Jackson, I got a slice you know? a couple weeks ago. That's what I'm saying. The pizza's good. Actually, so, so, I mean, he's always looking at new things, man. That's what's up. And I, I don't know, man. I kind of like. I like the the players have the power, you know. Yeah, it, it keeps the owners on their toes, yeah. man. Yeah. And and don't get me wrong, I know we talk about a lot about KD. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he a snake, he this, he that. But I, I like, man. Think about it, man. Trader. That's when what when Seattle, you know, up up and left the owner, you just went mm -hmm. to straight to Oklahoma City. Why if it was better for him? So why can't the players leave when it's, right. it's better for them? You know. So and honestly, ever since the decision. Uh, and Dan Gilbert with that letter, I ain't never had respect for him, so I really couldn't care less what happened to the franchise. Um, yeah, I feel like it would have been the dumbest thing in the world if he would have went back to Cleveland. I see all them people, the media outlets saying, "Oh, he should go back to Cleveland," or it should be a possibility he could stay one year in Cleveland. Why? Why in the heck would he stay one year in Cleveland when he knows he's gonna leave anyway? Might as well just go to L.A. Yeah, they might not be all that good this year. Even though I think they might, they might go to the Western Conference Finals because they still might not be done in acquiring players. But um, you know, the team that they have now. You know, even if they don't acquire a player, they're obviously not going to go far. But if they do, I think they will. But you might as well just wait it out a year. The Warriors are still good. You might be even that much better next year. You can't really depend on getting Kawhi Leonard at this point because 
Uh, it just seems like the Spurs don't really want to make a deal. With now, you, heard so. the, you heard the reports about Kawhi Leonard wanting to play for the Clippers. Yeah. Obviously, he doesn't want to play for the Clippers. He's only putting that out there because the Spurs are just so... Hard-headed, just, basically. They, they, yeah, they, they, they're being hard They've been real so, stubborn. Yeah, you know? they're just so stronghold on getting the late, or about not making a deal with the Lakers. So... Um, From a basketball standpoint, I mean, I think they got a lot of young assets. They um, should do. I mean, I mean, the only person I wouldn't trade. I think we had already talked about this in the first episode is uh, Kuzma. Yeah, but other Kuzma. than that, man, I'll get rid of everybody. But the Spurs else. are gonna be asking for Kuzma. That's the thing. Nah, that's I, and true. I think the Lakers. I just think you don't want to put your franchise in a position where you put all your eggs in the LeBron basket and a Kawhi Leonard basket, and then you don't end up winning the championship. I mean, so, just. The, it's, the not, top, it's not bad keeping your young talent around. I mean, yeah, but keep keep the young talent, grow, keep your draft picks, and then in 2019, man, you got Kyrie. Obviously, he's not going to come. But you got Jimmy Butler. You got Klay Thompson. You got mm-hmm. free agencies, man, that if Kawhi Leonard – and then Kawhi Leonard, too. I'm sorry. He, he can, he'll be yeah. free agent, too. So, I mean, be patient. You know, LeBron signed a four-year deal. You know, but uh, I don't so. think you can be patient, though, because look. Look what happened uh, with Paul George. Uh, the report's coming out that he wanted to actually play in L.A. last year. He wanted to go to L.A. last year. <sighs> And L.A., like, they wanted to do the deal, but they figured, okay, he's going to come to us anyway the next offseason. Then what did he do? Well, I got, he got okay. traded to OKC, and then he ended up resigning with OKC. Listen, listen so to, he got listen, caught up in all the, you know. Listen to my theory, and let me know what you think about this. So Paul George, mm-hmm. basically in Indiana, uh, uh, basically about a year ago, two years ago, mm-hmm. say, told Indiana, hey, I don't want to be a Pacer anymore. I want to go to L.A., right? Yeah. So uh, basically telling them, trade him. The entire year, he gave implication. I think Magic Johnson got fined for tampering, for even, you know, saying Paul George's name. So he knew for a fact the Lakers wanted him, Mm -hmm. everything. That's right, yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, he doesn't even take a meeting with Magic Johnson. I think, I think, no, I think it's because of Kawhi Leonard. You think so? I don't even think the Lakers called him. Wow. I swear, I don't even think the Lakers called him. Think about it, because... If you are, if Magic Johnson, and we already know July first is when teams can officially mm-hmm. talk to players, but we already know players. We already know they yeah, have a line of communication of already open. So if he knew LeBron was coming, and then the moment you get the report that Kawhi Leonard wants to come, everybody in their right mind who knows basketball is going to say Paul George isn't better than Leonard. So I don't even yeah. think they entertain that anymore. So instead of him looking bad, he, I mean, why would you sign back? I mean, think about it. Westbrook played eighty games. Paul mm-hmm. George played 79 games. Westbrook <laughs> took 347 more shots than mm-hmm. Paul George. I mean, like that that doesn't that mean and but you know what? You made an all-star team. You made the NBA, you made the NBA all third team. Mm-hmm. You're in Oklahoma City, man. I mean, getting kicked out the first round to get you a party thrown. <laughs> you know, they they, they want to be relevant. So I think yeah. I think he stayed in his comfort zone. He did he didn't want reject he won't love. Like everybody, I think everybody won't love. Everybody at their job. So I don't even think mm-hmm. the Lakers entertained it, honestly. And think about it. Would you would you rather let me ask you this question. Would you rather sign Jimmy Butler or Clay Thompson? Or would you sign Paul George? Out of those three players, who would you rather have rank them for me? Mm, I'll I'll say Paul George number one, Clay Thompson two, and then Jimmy Butler three. Okay, so you would want Paul George? Yeah, over over, over those over two. Over Clay. Yeah, over Clay. Not over I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Over Clay and Jimmy Butler. Yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't. I mean, I, would. I, I, I would. guess, I guess, just because. I would, honestly. I guess just because LeBron game. So I mean, look, if you want, if you need a spot up shooter, obviously LeBron James can just find Clay Thompson or Paul George. I would agree with that. But Jimmy Butler, well, you see, I would want Jimmy Butler more than Paul George. Well, you see when uh, okay, you see Jimmy Butler when he was in the East with the Bulls. Yeah, that was good, but they never really went to no Eastern Conference Finals. There was never really a threat. But I think now. He's in the West, and I think LeBron's gonna find that out the hard way this year too. The West is a different animal, so it's it's more teams you got to play every night. You got to play your hard. You got to play your hardest every night. Not saying you had to play your hardest in the East every night, but it's just a different level of intensity in the, in the West. So I feel like you know he's struggling with that, and he's struggling just like you said. Uh, Westbrook shot almost three hundred times more than Paul George, so he's trying to figure out okay, how do I fit in with another superstar? Superstar that's bigger than me in the spotlight more than me, so. I think he's managed that well. You know, yeah, they had a bad season last year, but I think one more year under their belt. Carmelo, I think, was the problem. Um, I felt like he could have got better this year. They kept him, but obviously they feel like they just need to move forward from that situation. Uh, okay, well, let me put you on like, the spot. Let me put you on uh-huh. the spot. Lakers record next year, what is it? The Lakers record? Next year, what is it? Uh, let's see, what did they win this year? 47, something like that? Oh, no, no, no. It was 35? Or, I mean, 37, 35? It was 35? 30, they didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, they didn't 37. make the playoffs. Yeah. So like keep, minus keep the team as is. So no, no other players at it. I think they win. I think they win fifty nine games. Fifty nine games. Is this man sleep? 
I've, 59 I've seen, games? 59 games, yeah. 59 and 23 so, in so the West. That'll be what? 59 and 23 in the West. Yeah. They'll be like, what? Well, uh, what was Cleveland's record last year in the, in the East? 40, be, 49. They won 49 games in the East. It, no, no. Yes. They didn't okay, win anything. But, but look, they got, a, they got a way better team than, than Cleveland was last year. But they in a better conference. They're gonna, yeah, they're in a better conference. They're in, the but, they're in the division with Golden State. Yeah, they're yeah, that's true. But I feel like they can, besides Golden State and Houston, they pretty much are better than LeBron. Just LeBron alone, he could he could beat pretty much any, pretty much okay. The team they had last year with Cleveland, I feel like they've proven they could have beat like maybe not Houston and the Warriors, but they could have beat the Warriors, Portland, the, New Portland, Orleans, the Orleans. The, you know the, what I'm saying? The, okay, not the top so, tier West team, right? But, not, not Houston okay. and Golden State. So I feel like. They'll get enough noise they can get 59. I ah, that's I mean I the so, only man. way I and see that not acquire players. The only way I done. the only way I see that man is Houston and Golden State coasting. And I mean the young player is trying to show I mean, 59, nah, you sleep. Nah. Ah, 48 for me. 48? 48, maybe 50, crack 50. I'll say 50. You think they might just crack barely crack no. 50? LeBron will get you a good 10 wins. He, he's uh, nah, not no I think LeBron, 59, 23. No, I think I no think way. LeBron, I think LeBron's proven that he's he ain't gonna go out like no Trump. I mean, that's true. Last year, okay, he was the fourth seed. What last year, right? And I just feel like his team. I feel like Cleveland is horrible last. Year. Like yeah, I feel they like they're gonna have like. I feel like Cleveland will have win 18, 18 to twenty games this year. Like they I mean, looking like that. They looking like trash. that. I, I, I'll say. I like Colin Sexton, you know, but yeah, he not. Dang. All right. Well, okay. Well, let's keep it on free agency, damn it. We were talking about LeBron uh, for a minute. So, Boogie Cousin, man. Yeah, man. What's thing about Boogie Cousin going to the Warriors, man? It's. Hey, you feel it? You even feel like watching the NBA? Hey, next year. you know what? You know what? When, when I saw it, point watching the NBA. When it came, when it came on my phone, man, as a notification, I was about to throw my phone. Um, I said about four, five cuss words, and then uh, <laughs> I'm glad. You know, I glad. I'm glad we do the show week to week because if I would have hopped on that day, it would have been a whole different. Yeah, I'm feeling now. I was feeling then. now. Sheesh. I mean, honestly, man, you you look at the reports. Uh, Anthony Davis didn't want him back. Yeah, he didn't want him back. He didn't want him back. But he why would you not want them? Heard he was toxic. Heard he was toxic in the, in, the, uh, in the locker room. Hey, think about it. Why they would, the Warriors want him then? They were so actually. Well, that's what I'm getting at. I actually <laughs> think that he was. Uh, the Pelicans was better when he got hurt. That's what I'm they saying. They swept. They, they swept on uh, the Trailblazers. But you would still want him back. It would be even that much better with, with Boogie Cousins. No, nah, man. I just, like. I just think he was clogging the paint. And Anthony Davis, his numbers went up. Man, he was. I don't think he would have been an MVP. You don't think caliber. they could fit together? He, he wouldn't have been third in MVP if Cousin was still healthy. So I, I think, agree, yeah, I, I think it allowed his numbers to inflate, get better. And man, all right. So obviously, Boogie Cousin mm-hmm. didn't get a long term contract that he was looking for, so he decided to go with the Warriors. One, I heard they want him coming off the bench. I think he's gonna have a problem with that. Yeah. Okay. Two, he got an attitude. Draymond got an attitude. They're gonna clash in the locker room. Three, Durant got an attitude too. Yeah, man, I think Durant. Getting the technical foul. That man being fake. Year. That man fake. Fake, fake card. Fake attitude. Anyway, okay. His Achilles. The man tore his Achilles. Achilles tendon. Right. Yeah. I got some stats for you, man. I like to bring numbers up. It's been three All Stars, Hall of Fame actually, potential players. Elgin Baylor for the Lakers, he was averaging twenty seven points a game. The following season, the man averaged twelve points. Patrick Ewing, towards Achilles, was yeah. averaging twenty three mm-hmm. points a game. Mm-hmm. After the injury, he averaged nine. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah. And then Dominique Wilkins averaged twenty six points. After the injury, he averaged twenty five. So he's the only outlier. Okay, you get no lift, man. He's pushing 270, almost 300 pounds. Cousins, mm-hmm. I mean, a basketball man is like boxing, all about footwork. Well, uh, well uh, what do you think about him as a player? Then you, you, you don't think he's I don't, uh, I, man, an all-star or like MVP caliber type player? I don't like, think so, man. Honestly, you don't think he's that 20 points a game type player? I don't nah. think so, not anymore. And honestly, I think – I think and, he still and, can and, be. and the only reason, though, you're right, because I don't think he was really predicated on a- athleticism. Yeah. So he wasn't yeah. really a hot flyer, you know. He was just yeah, a, he was a bruiser. He was never really, you know. But honestly, man, I think with the Warriors, it's gonna be a it's he's gonna be a well. Obviously, a with the Warriors, McGee, he's not gonna get touches. He's, he's gonna, gonna be a Javale so. McGee. I just think he's not. Ah, gonna, he's not gonna be able he'll to average more than ten. He's know? not gonna be able to if influence healthy, the game. He, hey, if he's healthy, he's averaging fifteen. He's not even coming back in, until January. I heard. Well, they was really saying he might not play the whole season. He might not come back to the playoffs. The Warriors really like that's gonna be a story to watch because. Cousins could come back before January. Hey, I was here at Christmas at the earliest he can come back. And then I've heard, like, he, he might not come back the whole season. I heard he might come back during the playoffs. So it's like nobody really knows. It's like you said, the Achilles is like a weird thing. Is You don't know how a player is going to bounce back from that. So he has to get all his lift back. He got to get all his energy back. 
And the way he plays at a high level, you're going to want him. With the whole reaction as far as Boogie, I think it came from his accolades. I just, yeah. I just honestly, I don't, I don't, it, it was a big deal when he signed. I still think it's a big deal. Uh, I think Huge. it's, it's, it's going to be the first time since Huge 1970 deal. at the Boston yeah. Celtics that five, um, a starting all five stars, is made of all stars all from star the previous team. season. Yeah. So, I mean, from that standpoint, they don't need any more help. So, it doesn't make the Warriors better. It it does. Did they just swoop the finals? They did. So, they don't need any more <laughs> help. But I don't think it's going to – I don't think it was as big as a, of a deal. I'm so, what is – okay. So, you think it's not a big deal. But, I mean, what, what are the Warriors trying to – I mean, what statement are they trying to make right now? I mean – just like you said, they got the best team. They just swept the finals last year. Nobody in the East is touching them. Nobody in the West is really even touching them. So I mean, the Rockets, you can make a case they could have won I mean, if Chris Paul would stay healthy. But I mean, why, I mean, just like you said, why sign Boogie Cousins? You got the best team already. I mean, the rich get richer. I mean, if you won the lottery and you saw $100 on the, on why the ground, so you pick it up. Why be so greedy? Man? I mean, I'm just, that's human nature. And I just felt like they. I can't stand the words, man. It just, <laughs> it's just sickening because it's like, why even watch the NBA? And then for. For Boogie Cousins to take $5 million, the type of player that he is, he could have easily got that money anywhere else. And, you know, you can say, oh, well, hey, he's trying to win a championship. You know, he's trying to take less money. But I kind of agree with what you said. Hey, maybe he really uh, would have been a hothead. Maybe teams really didn't want him or didn't want to pay him. And the Warriors are like, hey, man, we're already good. Might as well just take the chance on him. But I don't know. I feel like... Well, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't, just, I don't he's just taking the easy way out, man. I don't I think like. I don't think the Warriors is gonna their reign is gonna last as long as as we think. And just keep in mind, man. They keep uh, signing players like <laughs> July eighth, man. The eighth, the eighth anniversary of LeBron decision. Uh huh. I'm making a prediction right now. KD, he's not staying after this show. KD. KD. Well, you KD. heard reports that he was like trying to play with LeBron this year. Well, I, heard Le- I, heard Le- I heard LeBron hit him up and asked right. him to come to yeah. the Lakers. And his response. What do you think about his that? His response wasn't a hell no. It was a. Uh, I want to see this season yeah. play out. Maybe let's go for a three P, and then we'll see what happens next year. I, I guarantee you, he's not staying. Up, um, so you think? So you think KD want to play with LeBron, or he wants to just ah, he may leave, play, he, go to stay because he's bored? Or? He may put LeBron. He may go back to OKC. 